Today, let's make a cup cozy for a Starbucks type cup. I'll be working on the Kiss FG2 loom with number two yarn. This sweater will fit the medium and large coffee house type cups best. It's shown here on the medium. Before beginning the main part of the sweater, or simultaneously with it, if you have a setup such as I have, by which I mean I've got my loom set up to knit in the round for the circumference I need, but my, my sides of the loom are long enough that I've got extra pegs. So if I want to, I can cast on now. The arms only need to be E-wrap cast on. And we cast on seven stitches. Four, five, six, seven. Now we'll do our normal U-wrap and knit 24 rows in the main color of the sweater. I'm slipping the first stitch of each row. These arms will make long tubes, basically. We don't have to sew them into a tube because it's the nature of knitwear to turn itself into a tubular shape. Slipping the first stitch, knitting six for every one of the first 24 rows which are in the sweater main color. And we'll go like that and then we'll change to the hand color. I'll do one more row with you and then I'll continue my 24. Oops, almost forgot to knit my last stitch. Now I slip that stitch and one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I'll see you in a few rows. When the first arm rows are completed, change colors, leaving a little bit of a yarn tail, at least four inches, and we'll knit the hands. They don't have to be realistic hand color, because after all, this is a sweater, so the person wearing it could also be wearing mittens. Then we're going to knit five rows of the contrasting color. There's one. Still slipping the first stitch. Oops, which I almost didn't do. I hung my loop on the first stitch the first peg, but to slip it, keeping up with my pattern, I would knit it, would not knit it over. And by the way, there's my main yarn supply. I am not cutting the main yarn for this few little rows. Slip, knit six. This time, both of these will knit over. So that's row two. Rows three, four, and five will all be exactly the same. Slip one, knit the remainder. I've got five rows completed. I'm going to break the hand color yarn and just leave the tails or lightly tie them together in a bow if I think that'll keep them out of the way. I want to be able to manipulate them later. The only point in this is that I won't have them dangling down so far, but we're going to need those tails. Now I get my main yarn untangled from everything, and I resume knitting, being careful that when I come up here to resume, I don't pull it so tight as to shorten up the hand length. Again, slip one, knit the remainder. So I did that by just not even wrapping the first one this time. 
So this is row one of 24 more arm rows. Each arm is 24 rows long, at least at this gauge. I slipped by not wrapping. I mean, there's nothing in it over here, but there is on the other end this time. Twenty-two arm rows to go. There, I have all of my hand and arm rows completed, and I'm going to remove the stitches onto this stitch holder. Now, you could use a safety pin or waste yarn or any kind of a stitch holder if you wanted. I made this one out of a paper clip, and I showed you how to do it in the movie on Tom's Rib Gusset Sock. So if you want your own paper clip stitch holders, you can easily make them. So now we'll just set this aside. Technically, since my loom has this room, I could just leave them here. Maybe put a rubber band around the stitches. But since I'm filming, I think it's going to confuse the visual field and I will just set them aside for safety. We'll use these arms later. I'm going to use the long tail cast on. So that involves three times around the room, the loom, not the room, in length of yarn. Plus, I always allow a little bit extra because who wants to find out they're an inch short when they are almost uncasting on. So here's my yarn supply, and here's my tail. What I'm going to do is wrap the yarn supply around a peg. What I'm going to do is use the long tail, thus the name of the cast on, and wrap it around the peg. It's basically an E-wrap. Then use the main yarn supply wrap as for a normal U-wrap stitch, which is what we're going to do, knit over, tighten up, and repeat all the way around the loom. Wrap with the tail, wrap with the main yarn, knit over. Now I'm going to do a few of these in front of your eyes while I talk about something else. First of all, if you need more help with the long tail cast on, I have entire videos just on that. So I'm not going to belabor the point here. Just give you a good look. Second, this is number two yarn. I think it is Hirschner's Afghan yarn, the lighter version. They also make a worsted weight. It is number two, as I said, and I think that for this design, many number two yarns could be substituted, but this is a nice one that I have on hand. An all cotton yarn is not ideal, especially if you're a beginner, just because it's harder to get neat even stitches and ribbing that's resilient and bouncy in all cotton. Advanced knitters, you do as you think best because you know whether it'll work out for you or not. Beginners stick with acrylic or a wool acrylic blend is my advice. This is the KISS FG2 loom. FG can mean in your mind fine gauge or fixed gauge because either one is true. It's a relatively fine gauge loom. And that is determined not only by the spacing from peg to peg along this dimension, but how far the pins are spaced away from the pegs. Just for your information, KISS makes two finer looms than this. The FG1 is constructed exactly like this one, but with closer spacing from pin to peg. The FG0 doesn't have any pins. I think it's the only KISS loom that does not. And the reason is that there simply isn't room for pins and getting the same 
and allowing to get the really fine gauge. I'm getting about six stitches per inch on this loom with this yarn and that's what you're aiming at for this pattern. However, the pattern includes versions for many, many gauges. So if you don't have this yarn and this loom and you want to make it, you will be able to. You just may have to adjust peg and row count and it's all in there. Also, it's a forgiving pattern. We are only fitting coffee cups after all and with knitting. The cup is not going to complain that it itches under the arms or that it makes her look fat. So you've got a little bit of leeway. You may also make the ribbing a greater amount or even all of the length. The doing so, using more ribbing, will give you more fit resilience since it pulls in and stretches out more even than stocking it, which is pretty stretchy that way. You can get a cup hugging fit without a perfect gauge. But what I'm using here on the FG2 is 48 stitches and we'll be working in the round. Now about this cast on, it's the one that I think is going to look the nicest, but you may use any one you want. It's just that I tried E-Wrap and double E-Wrap, and I wasn't as pleased with the look of the lower edge as with the long tail cast on. However, that is definitely open to personal taste and the pattern will work with another cast on. Also, if for some reason you're working on a loom and you just don't quite have enough pegs, the forgiving nature of the fit, you, you can do with probably four fewer and get by with it if you just find you don't have enough pegs. Now, you will see that I am working with the open configuration created by using seven peg ends. If you have ends with more pegs than the basic end, I do recommend it because I find it much easier to keep up with what I'm doing, especially counting knits and pearls. When I can see down in, as you can here. But every kiss loom comes with end pegs, depending on the size of the loom. One, two, or three pegs might be on the end and you can work with those and knit in the round. The pattern definitely is designed for working in the round, but I'll tell you right quick how you can fix it if you prefer or need to knit it flat. And that is add two stitches to the number, so in this case you would knit on 50 rather than 48 pegs. Follow all the directions except you'll be working back and forth instead round and round. Make sure those two end stitches at each end of the flat panel are always knitted, never purled. So in a minute I'm going to knit two purl two around for several rows. You would knit one or slip one is another option. Knit two purl two around and knit the last stitch. Then you would do the same thing again either slip one or knit one, knit two purl one around, and knit the last stitch. And later, when the whole thing is done, you would seam those two edge knit stitches together. They would be consumed in the seam. I prefer the round version, but if you can't do it, this is an option. So on around we go. You will have noted that the um, Long tail cast on takes longer than e-wrapping, but the payoff is its neatness and attractiveness. Okay, the first 10 rounds are knit to purl to all the way around. I did a little trick that I do, and I will show you. 
I prefer to cast on going counterclockwise, but to knit going clockwise. Therefore, here is my starting yarn tail. That was the first peg cast on, but it's going to be the last peg of the first round. You do not have to do what I'm doing, but it's a little refinement that keeps there from being a gap. You also do not have to cast on one direction and knit the other. That is a very personal preference. I'm just wrapping the, what will be the last peg of the first round now. I'm not going to knit it over until I get there. And the fact that I wrapped it now will cut down on any tendency of a gap between the sections of knitting. So we knit two and purl tool. You can use your purling tool, otherwise known as a purling hook. You can use the knit and purl tool if you like that better, or you can do what I'm doing using my main hook to wrap above the previous stitch and knit it over for the knits and below the previous stitch, pull up a loop through the old stitch for the purls. If you need more help with that because you're a new knitter, I've got several methods fully videoed on my channel on KISS looms to make it easy for you. So let's all do 10 rounds of knit 2, purl 2 ribbing. The next step, and I've already started on mine, is 16 plain rounds. Just the kiss you stitch all the way around. While I knit for a minute, let me describe to you some options you have. I'm giving you a row count, but if you have a different size cup, or you're getting a slightly different gauge, there is no need to be completely faithful to my row count. You may adjust the length to your personal taste. You may also knit more ribbing and less plain rows if you prefer. You probably don't want to knit many fewer ribbing rows because we're relying on that bottom edge to pull in where the cup tapers. It's really okay to knit all the rows as ribbing. I just personally like the look better with some plain rows in the middle because our eventual cup cozy will more closely resemble a regular sweater and I think that's a cute look. So round and round we go, probably 16 rounds, but whatever amount you deem ideal for your purposes and your cup. Now we have our arms and we need to attach them to the body of the sweater. This is the most challenging and the most interesting part of the whole job. Here's my working yarn. So I'm going to pick up the first seven stitches on what will become the center front. Until now, we really didn't know how the thing was oriented because it's the same all the way around. At this point, the decision is being made. That's not picking up as easily as I expected. So we'll use this sharp tool to pick it up. Pick it up. Put it on the double eye needle. Any kind of stitch holder that you have may be used. A safety pin. One of the paper clippy ones that I make myself. One, two, three, four, five. Two more. A piece of waste yarn, which is actually what I'm using here. This um, bodkin is just to get my stitches onto the waste yarn. It's better when we get it on, get the knitting onto the bodkin, to slide it on down to the waist yarn, because waist yarn being less slippery will not tend to fall out. There we go. Something happened to me that could happen to you, so I'll go ahead and fess up. I was careless and tugged a little bit too much and this stitch came off and this it actually unknitted one row 
So I'm going to repair that. All right. And at this point, I'm going to get, be very, very careful. But one thing that I can do is wrap the working yarn so that there's a little downward pressure on it. Because I am going to need to manipulate this area. I'm going to hang either end of the arm. It doesn't matter which one first, but I'm going to hang the end that's on this clip because then I can reuse the clip and show you how to get stitches off onto it. I'm going to slide it into position. These stitches are going on to the needles that we just emptied. Make certain that you get it with the knit side of the fabric facing the loom. In other words, oriented the way it was knitted. Otherwise, your arms will come out facing the wrong way with the back side of the fabric in view, the purl side. And many times it's fine for the purl side to be considered the right side, but this particular project, that is not true. Okay, one at a time, getting the stitches off the stitch holder and onto the pegs that we bared for their use. The particular yarn I'm using tends to split a little bit easily. It's quite nice to work with actually. But I have to be careful with this sharp pick to get a whole stitch, not a piece of a stitch. And although that looks like one stitch, yeah, it's two. So I need to be careful that I keep that in mind. Now here's the last one. And our stitch holder is free. Now we need to rehang the stitches that are on whatever we used to remove the working stitches. So there will be two sets of stitches on each peg, just for these few pegs. And this will be one side of the front. If you were actually a person in this sweater, this would be your left arm. I'm trying to avoid doing any twisting of the stitches. We don't have to take the waist yarn out right this second because it'll pull out easily enough later. So we go across, lifting the stitches, stretching them as needed because they tend to scrunch in a little bit, and getting them back on their original pegs. Let's see. If I take both of these strands beginning and after the stitch and give them a tug, that'll elongate the stitch again. Back to kind of normal, makes it easier to hang. Almost missed one. There it is. All these are hung, and I should be able to gently but firmly pull the waist yarn out. So that's one way to get the arm on. Now this other one, I don't have to hang live stitches, I'm hanging cast on stitches. This is one side of the front, this is the other side. This will be the back of the sweater. But at the other end of half of the pegs, and there are 24 that are half because 48 is total. I want to now release these seven stitches so as to make room. This time I'm going to do it with the stitch holder. In my opinion, a stitch holder is slightly easy to work on and off of than waste yarn, but opinions do vary on that. So use what works for you. Ready for the last one. The nice thing about a paperclip stitch holder 
is you can bend it in and out of shape as needed to make it a little bit more flexible. Okay, that's out of the way. Now we need to find the other end of my arm. Take a little time over this. Be sure that it's pulled straight, then inserted in the same orientation. Because should a twist go into it now, you would never be able to get it out. So you'd basically have to frog it unless you didn't mind twisted arms. And although I'm not a fuss budget, I think I would mind them. Now, if you really hate hanging live stitches, you will have already realized, I'm sure, that you could eliminate the need to hang live stitches at the other end of the arm by binding off. And then you could hang the bind off. If you want to do it, that is okay. The difference it will make is very minor. And this is just a cup cozy, nothing fancy or spectacular. There we go. You cannot get out of hanging the live stitches that you took off the loom. They really need to remain alive. Well, I'm going to take that back. I'm not going to recommend that you do it. But if you find you just cannot manage the live stitches and hanging and rehanging them, you could bind these off loosely enough to then hang the bind offs. I don't think it will look quite as nice, but again, we are talking about a cup cozy, not a piece of great art. So if you want to do it and the hanging and rehanging is driving you nuts, that's worth a try. ready for my very last stitch. And here we go. From now on, the knitting resumes in the round and normally. Let me release this. I no longer need to keep it from falling off because it's not likely to. And we're going to knit ribbing again. And the project begins and ends in knit two purl two ribbing. You could substitute a different ribbing if you preferred. This is the important thing for you to see. These two stitches will knit off at, as one. And at that point, they will be permanently joined. And you can quit worrying about the arms. Now, purl two, same thing. Going through both loops. So we'll do this all the way around, knit two, purl two, but on two places on the loom, here and the other side of the front, this will actually be knitting two together while we join those arms. Do five rows of knit two, purl two rib, mine are complete, and then bind off. You may use any bind off that you find neat and serviceable for this. I'm using the transfer bind off here, which I do have whole videos on, but here's a quick review. Move stitch one to peg two, wrap the peg, knit over both stitches that are on it, and repeat. Makes a nice chain stitched edge bind off that looks very tidy and isn't difficult to do. Here I am, just about around. Whoops, almost lost it, but transferring the second to last stitch to the last peg, knitting over. Then I've already snipped the yarn, leaving a long tail, which I'll just pull through. I probably won't need the long tail, and we'll just weave it in and snip off the excess. But just in case there was a tension issue with the bind off, 
I leave one so that I won't have to add a separate piece of yarn if I have to redo it. Okay, don't expect your ribbing to look its best until you've given it some lengthwise pulling to set the stitches. It always helps on both machines and looms. And it really did. So now, I already checked off camera. I've got plenty of stretch here. So I can snip to a more normal length and start weaving in yarn tails. I'll only show you one or two, but I will go around the work finding them all. This time, I'm going to use this latch needle. It's a machine knitting needle made into a tool. You can also use a regular yarn needle, of course. You know all these ways. I'm using a latch needle here. This is a machine knitting tool. And actually just a needle from any um, standard gauge knitting machine will do. Going through the backs of some stitches, grabbing the yarn tail, pulling it through. You don't have to have this tool. It's just handy, and I do have one. You can weave in with any sort of a normal um, yarn needle. Here where a tail ended up on the front, I'll just pull it through and give it the same treatment. My purple tails are woven in. I just snipped the last of them. Do you see how the arms rolled themselves into tubes? You really don't need to do anything to them, but if you want to sew these edges together, you can. I normally don't, because they're going to hang down just fine. But what I do recommend doing is taking one of these yarn tails over to the place halfway down the hand color, wrapping it tightly twice, and now tie it to the other one on the back side very firmly and knot it. At this point I'll weave it in and snip it. It creates a nice definition for the hands as though the person is holding their hands in front of them together clasped. Let me weave in those tails. There really is not enough length down the hand color to do a good job of weaving. And since this edge just rolls in and hides itself, I normally weave on up it for a little bit. Pull both tails through. They don't want to go. Let's give them a little slack. That'll make, that may help them. There they go. And now when I snip these ends, they'll be hidden, rolled into the arm. There it is. Let's try it on. Here's the coat we just made. 